All right, so uh, let's give it a go. Um, so uh, welcome to uh, Inform's TSL Society uh, webinar series. And this is our second time for uh, inviting a speaker, an outstanding speaker. And this uh, talk was organized by the Urban Transportation Special Interest Group. And my name is Chang Yong Gwon from University of South Florida. So it's uh, my pleasure to introduce our second speaker, uh, Dr. Ya Fung In uh, from University of Michigan. And uh, his research area has been in the analysis of infrastructure systems and the design and the uh, developing some algorithms and modeling in the uh, urban mobility uh, topics. So, uh, to, so he has been uh, assuming uh, lots of uh, editorial service roles, uh, including in transport science and service science and transport research part B and C. So, uh, so we know uh, who he is. And uh, so we are expecting a really interesting talk today. So uh, thank you. And uh, I welcome Yafang to uh, speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chang. Uh, oh, just just one second. I'm sorry. So uh, during the uh, talk, so if anyone has an, any questions, you can always uh, send a question in the chat menu. And the, at the end of the talk, so we will have uh, we will allow uh, participants to uh, speak. So uh, if you like, uh, you can uh, ask questions in real time. So thank you. Sorry, Apple. No, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I would like to thank TSL uh, for inviting me to um, speak in this seminar series. Um, and thank you for, for your interest in my research. Um, and then for those of you who celebrate uh, Lunar New Year, uh, Happy New Year to you. Um, so today um, I plan to share with you one of our recent work on a new paradigm of controlling uh, traffic uh, in a fully automated vehicle environment. Um, so this is a joint work with a number of researchers at Tsinghua, uh, led by Fang He and Meng Li. Uh, the research was spearheaded by Xi Ling and now by one of my PhD students, uh, Mo Jitapa. Um, so as you know, um, the automated vehicle technology uh, is expected to reshape our city and transform the way uh, how we manage and design transition systems. So today I'm going to present you a new way of designing or managing future transition systems. Um, so by no means I'm, I'm uh, advocating uh, or predicting uh, this is gonna be the future, uh, but I just want to present you one possibility um, and demonstrate uh, what we can do uh, by leveraging the precise control of AV uh, maneuvers uh, in a fully automated vehicle environment. Um, so I'm gonna call this new scheme as rhythmic control um, so later on, I'm going to explain why we give the scheme such a name. Um, I hope I can convince, can, can convince you that the scheme is simple, but yield superior performance as compared with previous um, paradigms. Uh, it's computational tractable and can be applied uh, to the control of large scale systems. Okay. Um, so in my talk today, I'm going to focus on intersection control, uh, then I briefly uh, mentioned the application of rhythmic control to control of the traffic network. Okay, so that's the plan for today. Um, so intersection controls um, is the cornerstone of traffic control, right? Because the efficiency and safety of the system depends on intersection control. So intersection is where conflicting movements compete for right away. Um, so therefore, the essence of intersection control is resource allocation, uh, right away allocations. So since the invention of traffic signals, the principle of resource allocation has been grouping non-conflicting movements as a group, assigned right away to the group, a group, one group at a time, while all the other group are waiting. Okay, so that's the principle. This principle has been implemented for almost one century. Okay, so under this principle, um, and the number of the lane owning the right away at a time is limited to the number of conflicting movements in the group, right? So for example, for this intersection, and um, um, so this intersection is four intersections uh, with, um, with the um, two through movement, one left term and one right term. So there's 36 conflict points in this. Um, so depending on the uh, combination, phase combination, uh, the right of way, um, the, the number lane only in the right way at a time um, vary from three to four, okay? So this seems not a efficient use of right away because uh, particularly when you think about the intersection as a network, 
um, and each of the conflict points as a network node. And then you're going to realize that the node's capacity is not fully utilized because the, the capacity, the node can be idle for a substantial percent of time, right? Um, so then that's the limitation for this type of uh, right of allocation principle. And um, so previously has discussed how to leverage automation to, for example, improve uh, signal timing and the vehicle trajectory uh, that do this type of integrative optimizations. Um, but those proposals are actually limited to the same um, uh, limitation because essentially they follow the same right of allocation principle. Okay. Um, and then I think many of you also are familiar with the, um, um, the reservation scheme proposed by Professor Peter Stone and his colleagues. Um, I think this is represent a paradigm shift. So however, um, if you have a simple imp implementation, for example, first come first serve. Um, so this type of re revision scheme will lead to uh, higher delay and less throughput as pointed in the literature, pointed out in the literature. Um, so if you want to improve the, the performance, uh, you have to um, optimize those reservations in real time, which is not really comp computationally tractable for, uh, for the real time um, implementations. So the same thing can be said for the other single, uh, signal free operations uh, that leverage the real time optimization of the vehicle trajectory. Okay. So a research I'd like, uh, a question I'd like to impose uh, to motivate my talk today is, is it possible to design a low computation scheme that ensure collision free well yielding high throughput? Okay. So there's a video I'd like to play. And I think the video shed light um, on the answer to this question. So when these two group of people cross, there's so many conflict points, but people actually manage to go through them without stopping, without collisions, okay? So the synchronized precise control and precision control does the trick, which means that if you design the formation properly, if you design the pace properly, what people need to do is to follow them, to go through those conflict points without collision and without, without, without slowing down. So there's no real-time optimization, but you can actually achieve a high throughput, right? So if you apply this idea and so to single to intersection control, so because if people can do it and the automated, automated vehicle can do it too, it's not better in a fully automated vehicle environment. Okay, so if you want to implement this idea to the intersection control, which means that we have to determine the vehicle trajectories and vehicle speed essentially and design a layout of the intersections, and then more importantly, we want to determine the entering time for the vehicles such that they can, can follow to pass through those intersections, pass through all those conflict points uh, without collision and without slowing down. So we need to achieve a perfect spatial and temporal coordination of the vehicle trajectories, right? Such that they can take turn to pass through those conflict points. So if you apply this idea to this simple intersection where you have two one-way direction, one-way uh, lane intersecting with each other, there's no turning movement. The, the, the application is very simple, right? So the key point here though is, the, the, the key point here is the entering time of the vehicle can be predetermined following a recurring sequence. Okay, for example, every two seconds, you allow a vehicle to enter. So we're gonna refer this recurring sequence at the beat, okay? So the vehicle had to follow the beat to enter the intersection such that they can arrive at the conflict points in an alternating fashion, taking turn to pass through those conflict points, right? So the beat, each beat, each length for the one beat, there's an offset of the beat. So the beats you need to coordinate such that the vehicle can arrive at the conflict points in an alternating fashion. So that's the key point. This way, there's no real-time optimization because once the vehicle enter the, arrive at the, at the intersections, even there's no one using that intersection, the vehicle should wait to, to catch up the beat and to enter the intersection. So this way you can ensure collision free, right? So that's the idea. 
So let's look at how we actually determine the beat and beat length. Okay, so you can see that um, assuming that the vehicle length is 4.5 meter and the headway is the safety clearance between vehicles of three is three meter, which by the way, this is a very aggressive design. So let's stick to this design. And then assuming that the design speed is 12 meter per second, and then you compute that the beat length is 0 0.625 seconds, which means that every 0 0.625 seconds, there's gonna be vehicle passing through those conflict points. So which means that every two beats, every 1.25 seconds, a vehicle can enter lane one or lane two, right? So if the length of the segment is the same, which means that um, every event time the interval and every alternate interval, you can allow a vehicle to enter lane two and lane one. So this way, the vehicle can actually arrive at the, the conflict point in alternating fashion, taking turn to pass through this intersection, achieving the height throughput, right? So if the lens is different, L1 is not equal to L2, and you can actually, I call this offset, and you can adjust this offset to ensure alternating arrival at the intersections. So that's the idea. So with this idea, it seems like, Okay, each lane there's a beat and vehicle pull the beat to enter the intersection and you actually call it in the beat offset to ensure alternating arrival, right? So it seems like the, the, um, the intersection operates on the rhythm, okay? There's a rhythm. And so that's why we call this a rhythmic control, okay? Rhythmic control. So if you apply this idea to a general intersections where you have 36 conflict points, um, so, uh, by the way, we only consider the crossing conflict points. And so there's a diverging and merging conflict points. Um, so uh, we get, this will be handled outside of this conflict zone. So we're going to focus on within this conflict zone. We focus on the coordination within this conflict zone. Okay, we're going to focus on those 36 uh, conf crossing conflict points. Okay, so we have to ensure perfect coordination of the AV, um, the arterials, the, the, the trajectory to ensure um, the alternating arrival on those on those all 36 uh, conflict points, okay? So which is gonna be a major undertaking, but uh, uh, luckily it can be done, okay? So if you look at how we do it, and because each conflict point only involve two movements, right? So, and then um, you, if you follow the same design principles and then the beat length still 0.6, 25 seconds, okay? So which means that for every two beats, we can release one vehicle um, for each lane. And then we want to ensure the coordinate, the entering time, and such that we can ensure alternating arrival at all those 36 conflict points, okay? So for that, we can do two things. In addition to coordinating the offset, the entering time, we can also spatially locate all those 36 conflict points, okay? We determine the layout or, or determine the vehicle trajectory and such that we can ensure alternating arrival on all those 36 uh, conflict points, okay? So that's the idea. And so one outcome of this exercise is access, okay? So this is the T1, T2, T3. This is the entering time for those two through moments and one left turn. Um, so you can see that every 1.25 seconds, it's gonna be a vehicle entering. Every two beats, we release one vehicles. Um, and then the offset this is going to be the offset. So the offset are determined together with all those geometry information, we can ensure collision free on, on all those 36 conflict points. Okay, which means that we can ensure alternating arrival on those 36 conflict points. Okay, so with this design and the in, with this particular design and the geometry with this geometry information, you can ensure a constant uh, speed. Okay, so with this design, and you can see that the number of lanes that only the right away alternate from eight to four, which is always greater than what is under the uh, tra traditional traffic signal control. Okay, so this is the uh, demonstration of the operations. Okay, um, and this is uh, in an intersection where you have three through movement and two left turn movements. Okay, and we can ensure perfect the 64 uh, conflict points, we can ensure um, uh, collision free. On all of them, okay? So the operation may look busy to some of you, even scary to some of you, but I have to emphasize that because each lane there's an underlying beat governing the operation. The vehicle follows the beat 
to enter the, the intersection, okay? The design speed is constant. So therefore, this is a well-structured and well-organized uh, operations, okay? So you may naturally wonder, okay, what is the guiding principle when we design this scheme? How can we ensure collision-free for all of those 36 uh, country points, okay? The, under the fundamental idea is you have to ensure the underlying graph to be two colorable graph, which you can color the node periodically by only two colors. Here is the um, blue or black, okay? So this is just a motivating example I wanted to use to how to demonstrate how we can use the two colorable graph to ensure collision free. And for example, for this uh, network, you only had two movements, uh, one movement traveling from origin one to destination one, and the other one traveling from origin two to destination two. Okay, so they follow this path and follow this path. So there's gonna be a conflict point uh, in between. Okay, and notice that the color of the origin one is blue and the color of the origin two is black. Okay, so if you release the vehicle at the same time and every even time of the interval, assuming that, okay, within each interval, the vehicle can travel from one node to another node. Okay, so therefore, um, you can notice that if you release the vehicle at the same time, um, a vehicle departing from node one at any even time of the interval, the vehicle arrive at a node of blue, and every all time of the interval, they arrive at a node of black. Okay, and if you if you look at the vehicle departing from original two, it's opposite. The key point here is no two vehicle can arrive at the same node at the same time. This is how we ensure collision free. Okay utilizing the color to color graph. Another way for you to look at, uh, which might be more intuitive to some of you is, assuming the node color can change from one interval to another interval. For example, for node, for original one, the node is, the color now is uh, blue, and at the next interval, it's gonna be changed to black, okay? Assuming each node, the, 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 um, we have an alternating display of the, of the color. So therefore, you're gonna notice that if we release the vehicle from origin one, when the color is, is blue, whenever the vehicle arrive at the next node, the next node is gonna be blue. So all the nodes this vehicle encounter gonna be blue light. That's the reason why we call blue movements, okay? So the vehicle always have a blue light to traverse, to, to arrive at the destination. So this is, this essentially we call this movement as a blue movement. On the other hand, the vehicle departing at the node two, if the color is black, and then all the cut, all the nodes this vehicle encounter gonna be black node. Okay, so that's what we call this black movement. So you have two concrete movements, you have two color, and each movement has one color to traverse to the network, and that's how we ensure collision free. Okay, so now let's look at the property of the uh, design um, and how much we can accommodate, the, the, how much demand we can accommodate by this type of algorithmic control, okay? So, um, because for each lane and we release the vehicle every two beats, so therefore the maximum demand this control can accommodate is bounded about by one over two beat. So if you use the uh, 6.25 second as the design, as the beat length, and then the maximum demand this lane can accommodate is roughly 2,900 vehicle per lane per hour, okay? So now, if as long as the arrival demand pattern is within this de uh, divisional demand set, then the delay is bounded about by this equation if the arrival is stationary, okay? So the first one is, uh, because remember, we release a vehicle every two beats. So the average waiting time can be one beat. And then the second component is caused by the random arrival, the delay caused by random arrival. Um, so if the, if the arrival is Poisson, and then we have a cross form uh, expression for this average delay, uh, which is this like this, and it, let's assume if the beat length is one second, and then if the saturation degree is 0.9, the average delay is only 10 seconds per vehicle, which is very small, okay? And so now uh, this is some analytical result, and we also conduct numerical simulation to compare uh, compared with the benchmarks, for example, first come first serve reservation scheme, and also traditional traffic signal control, which will be optimized using a Webster's equations, okay? So we're gonna consider in this intersection and three through movement and two left turn movements, and we're gonna consider three demand pattern, balanced, unbalanced, and highly unbalanced, 
So the balance of I, if you look at demand vector, the first four components represent the plane through movement. Okay, the demand plane, plane demand for the through, and the last four will be the plane left term uh, demand. And so they're about the same. Unbalanced one, the through movement is double of the left term movement, plane demand. And highly unbalanced is more than triple. The, left, the through is more than triple of the left term. There's also one approach has much higher uh, demand. Okay. So now let's, let's look at the results. Um, so the balance situation is the average delay, this is the throughput. You can see that um, when the demand is low, so alpha here, okay, alpha here is a parameter, a scalar, uh, scaling up and down with total magnitude of the demand. Okay. So when alpha is small, which the demand is small, you can see that um, the reservation and the rhythmic control actually yield very low demand, low, low delay. And then when demand become higher and then the rhythmic control is the last one become oversaturated, okay? Uh, which leads to the high throughput, okay? And also you may notice that the rhythmic control actually has the lowest throughput. Um, as, uh, it's lower than the traditional traffic signal control, okay? Uh, which has been pointed out uh, by the literature. Okay, so this is for balanced situation. For the unbalanced situation and the observation is similar, okay? And, but now for highly unbalanced one, you can see that when the demand is low, uh, the observation is similar, but when demand is high, um, so the traffic signal control actually outperforms our rhythmic control, uh, yielding the highest throughput, okay? So the reason for that is, if you recall, um, in for rhythmic control, we actually, we alternating allocation of the right away. So 50% of the right away goes to one direction and 50% of the right away way goes to the other direction. Right. So when the demand is highly unbalanced, then the right of way allocated to the low demand movement is not fully utilized, which actually compromise the control efficiency. In contrast, for traffic signal control, you actually can optimize the green split. So you, you, you allocate less amount of uh, green time to the low demand direction. Right. So that's the reason why the traffic signal control actually outperforms the rhythmic control in the highly on demand situations. So apparently we need to improve our, our control, our design for the rhythmic control, okay? So the idea will be, we also have to do, we have to have to allocate the right of way proportional to the demand. You cannot just do 50, 50% allocation, but certainly you want to ensure perfect coordination and you want to ensure collision free. How are we gonna do that? Which means that we will have to move from two color to K color. So we have this, which allow us updating from one to one allocation of the right way to M to N allocation of the right way, where M plus N equal to K. For example, if you have a three color and we can actually do two versus one allocation, two third of the right away goes to the high demand, uh, high demand movement and one third of the allocation go to the low demand um, um, movements, right? So intuitively the larger K is, the more precise allocation, and uh, we can ensure the proportion of the demand, right? But the more precise allocation of the right way we can do, uh, which will yield higher th capacity, okay? So, but when you, you have to make the underlying graph to be k colorable So luckily, we can actually make any direct graph to be k colorable by adding additional virtual nodes, which imply speed adjustment. You have to slow down to catch up the beat, so which actually increase the time you're gonna spend in the concrete zones, okay? You have to increase the delay. So um, a proper choice of K will depend on the trade-off between delay and capacity, okay? So given a demand pattern, we need to determine the K, a number of color to ensure that the capacity should be able to accommodate the demand pattern, which we actually build, build some buffer, but we need to accommodate, the first priority is to accommodate the traffic demand, and then we want to minimize the delay. Okay, so that's the consideration how we how we choose uh, the number color. So once we design, once we have the number colors, and then we have to the technical challenges still remain, which is how we ensure collision free using k colorable graph. Right. So now I'd like to go back to, to this motivating example because I didn't really finish the story. So there are only two concrete movements, and um, one has one color. Each of them has one color to traverse. So what if you have three conflicting movements in this on this graph? 
Uh, suppose there's another OD pair and the vehicle traveling from origin three to destination three, and apparently and this has conflict with the other uh, movement, right? So now you have three conflicting movement, you only have two colors to use, and how would you do that? And luckily, if you observe, and the new demand, the path actually does not conflict with the past one at all. Um, so you can actually group them into phase. So that's how we borrow the terminology from traffic signal control, okay? Um, we actually group the uh, non-counting paths into phase. So now we have blue phase and black phase. So essentially, um, these two, um, the path, the movement from between OD pair one and OD pair three is going to be one phase. And then the other phase go to the movement between the second OD pair, right? So the first one, this is going to be, you're going to use the blue color to traverse. And then the other phase still use black uh, to traverse, right? So now you have a, each movement has a color. And once you determine the color and you have to determine the entering time. So remember previously we said because the color of the origin one, the color of origin two are the same. So therefore you can release the vehicle at the same time. So this is assuming that we release the vehicle at the same time. And so this one use the blue, one use the uh, black color to traverse the network without collisions. And now, um, now we have to look at the new movements. So even the new movement is the um, is blue, but the departing color, departing node color is black. And so you want to have to ensure wait when this node turn green, turn blue, and you release the vehicle, right? So um, the entry time will be the out time of the interval. So you can actually release, release the vehicle such that the vehicle can use the color of blue to traverse the network without stopping. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, and then each phase will receive the same allocation on the right away. And so that's the idea how you use uh, two color to handle three conflict, conflicting movements. And now let's go back to the intersection. And the number of conflict, conflicting movements is much more than K, typically K, for example, three. So the number of the conflict movements is, is much larger than three. And so you need to decompose those movements into three. You have need to group them into three uh, phases, okay, phase group. So how are we gonna do that? We actually, um, we, we conduct cycle decompositions, okay? We decompose the graph into K non-conflicting, K collection of non-conflicting paths or cycles. So in the terminology of graph theory, there's two factors, okay? And then each phase receive one over k allocation right away. So, and then how we ensure the um, the right way allocation is to be proportional to the demand. We actually want to um, we for the because um, each link we want to replace the link the high demand link into with multiple links. So this way, when we do the cycle decomposition, the same link can appear at um, the phase different phase group more than once. Um, then this way they can allocate more than K plus one allocation of the right way. So that's the idea, okay? So now this is a general design principle. Um, and uh, I will apply this principle to the intersection, uh, which is the intersection in the numerical examples. Um, and now you can see that um, we actually make, first of all, we make the color to be three by adding some virtual nodes, right? Um, and then secondly, we do phase decomposition. We decompose them into three phases. And you can see that each phase is a collection of the non-conflicting path. Remember their path, they're not necessarily vehicle trajectory. Okay, so this is a non-conflicting path. And then for example, if the, for the left turn through movements, and so the vehicle has to use the blue, the color of orange to enter the intersection, and then they have to switch color to be black, which means that they have to do speed adjustment to catch up the beat of the, of the black movements and then they can ensure collision free for the rest of the vehicle trajectory. Okay, so that's the idea. And then based on the color of the depending, the color of the departing node and also color of the movements, we can determine the entry time accordingly to ensure collision free. So that's the idea. So this is the uh, demonstration of the three color represent uh, operations. And notice that the vehicle of this, or the vehicle of this left turn vehicle, and the, initially the color is orange, and then the switch color to black, uh, which means that they have to adjust the speed to catch up the black movement beat and to ensure collision free for the rest of the uh, trajectory. Okay, and also you notice that 
Um, this, this is low demand situation. So therefore every one third of the beat, every three beat, I release the vehicle for the high demand movement. So there are three beats and two out of three, I release the vehicle that's we can accommodate higher demand. Okay, so that's the, that's the three uh, color operations. Um, and then if you look at conduct simulation to verify, and this is it for the same un, highly unbalanced scenarios. And you can see that and now the three color operation and five color operation outperform traffic signal control. Okay. And like, interestingly, the two color and four color, the operation are the same because for this particular demand pattern, uh, one three to one allocation does not help at all. So you have to do two, two and two. Two and two is essentially the same as one and, and one, one versus one. So that's the reason why uh, the two color and four color are the same. Okay. Um, so now, the phase, the cycle decomposition actually provide a good perspective to connect the uh, rhythmic control and tra traditional traffic signal control because the phase combination under the traffic signal control is actually one particular cycle decomposition. So based on that cycle decomposition, composition, we can actually design the corresponding the rhythmic control that outperform the traffic signal control. So by construction, we can theoretically prove that the optimum rhythmic control can outperform the optimum traffic signal control. Okay, and similar to um, traffic signal control, the implementation of rhythmic control can be time a day, which means that you divide the whole day into different periods. For each period, you have a nominating traffic demand pattern. You optimize that rhythmic control with respect to demand pattern, and then you, you and then you change the plan uh, between between time a day. Okay, so that's the operation of time a day operations. Um, but I have to emphasize that. Even you vary the plan, uh, the, the implementation complexity is the same. Doesn't matter, it depends of the number of the color. Because after all, you what you need is to just have a, each lane that underlying beat, and then you get a predetermined speed profile. Okay. You just need to tell the vehicle the beat and tell the vehicle the predetermined speed profile. The automated vehicle is going to follow the speed profile, speed profile to traverse the, the intersection without any delay. Okay, so that's the and without any collisions. So that's the um, the implementation of the rhythmic control. Um, so the one question and one remark I have to make before we actually I will talk about the uh, applying the idea to the control of the traffic network. So this is a question we always get: What if something goes wrong? Okay. Um, so um, for the intersection operation, uh, I mentioned that because each each lane has a underlying beat governing the operation. So therefore, it's very easy to detect if the vehicle deviate from the online beat, and you can actually make adjustments. If a vehicle break down and or some accident happen, you could you just need to shut down the affected lanes and until the block has been removed. So the whole intersection, the other lane, if they're not affected, theoretically, you don't have to shut them down. Okay. Um, and also, I would argue that the risk level associated with this operation is similar to the risk level associated with the vehicle platooning that has been heavily investigated now. Okay, so that's the comment about the safety operations. And now let's briefly talk about um, the, the operations of the uh, traffic network. Okay, so um, if you notice that our design procedure for the intersection control, we treat the underlying uh, as a uh, the, the, the intersection as a graph, right? We do graph operation. We you, we do cycle decomposition. So a lot of this this concept is applicable to a general network because it's a more complicated graph, right? So the notion remains the same. Uh, it's, it's generally applicable. There's some certain additional complexity in terms of controlling the traffic network because first thing we need to worry about the um, the routing because between each of the pair the multiple route. Um, secondly, um, between intersection, we may have to do some vehicle shuffling with shuffle to ensure that the vehicle do not block another vehicle from entering the intersection by following a certain beat. Okay, so that's a technical difficulty we have to deal with um, for the general network, but the notion, the paradigm is similar. Okay, so this is a, a case study we did um, and for a sub network in Berlin. And uh, so in this design, we can reduce the delay by more than 50%. Okay, so this is just a demonstration that the general concept is applicable. And so we haven't done any comparison study uh, for this case study yet. Okay, and for this case study, 
we actually use the current network topology and use current geometry informations. We do not redesign the network. But if you have a luxury to redesign the network, and then the, um, you can make the control even simpler. For example, we can make the network to be one way, which will substantially simplify the control of the intersections. And this way, and you can do a better or simpler control, more efficient control, rhythmic control. So for example, uh, instead of admitting individual vehicle, we can admit the um, virtual photons, okay, virtual photons. So the virtual photon can travel um, vertically or horizontally and without taking turn. So this way you have only two color, you can use only two color to ensure collision free and it's easy for you to design the beat and the entry time to ensure collision free for the virtual photon. The virtual patron is similar like a train you schedule to travel from north to south and east to west. Okay, so this is a train. So then when the vehicle shows up, and what you need to do is to determine, for example, this vehicle show up, what you need to do is the a routing algorithm can determine when this vehicle enter the intersections, enter the network, and which train, which virtual patron this vehicle join, or leave and rejoin to arrive at destination. Because those trains do not take in turn, and the vehicle need to join different virtual platoon to arrive to finish the trips, right? So, and routing essentially is like a finding an empty seat in the train. It's a ticketed booking problem that's heavily invested in the literatures, okay? So there's so many research you can use. Um, so you can just simply use simple routing algorithms, for example, shortest path routing. Um, so every two lengths of the beats, and so this is the routing interval, you collect all the arrival of the AVs, and then you actually do the shortest pass routing to find ticket for them, empty seat for them to travel from the origin destination. If there's no, no empty seat, you just let them wait for another routing interval, which is just two, two lengths of the beat. Okay, so that's the routing. Um, so this type of design is very simple. So, um, and then this is the operation uh, demonstration of this type of network control. And if you can redesign them to be one way grid network. Okay. Um, and then this type of control is very efficient as compared with some of the benchmark, for example, um, the max pressure control um, um, and other type of controls. Okay. So that's my uh, take home uh, takeaway message. Um, so I, we actually propose a new paradigm of managing AVs to traverse a traffic facility. Okay. Um, in this new paradigm, a rhythmic control, uh, we can actually um, we each facility operate on the rhythm with a uniform bit length. Okay, there's a uniform bit length for the facility, and each facility is going to operate with this rhythm, with this bit length. Um, and then, so A, we actually follow a beat and speed profile to enter to traverse the facility. So we leverage the uh, key callable graph, and we synchronize the entry time, routing, and speed profile to ensure collision free. So the scheme actually can achieve higher throughput with less delay. Um, I hope you, it's competitionally tractable, scalable. For intersection control, there's no real-time information, so everything is predetermined. For the uh, network control, you may have to do some real-time routing, but the routing can be simple, okay? You don't have to use fancy routing algorithm. Just use a sh uh, shortest path routing, for example, um, because the, the operation is so efficient, the vehicles will not wait more than one routing interval and to traverse, uh, to, to, to enter the network, okay? So, we are not arguing that the, the scheme should be implemented to control all the networks. Uh, you can implement a scheme at select location, the critical large intersection of AV zones, okay? And lastly, I want to comment that this scheme, um, not necessarily for the future, okay? It can be implemented for other automated transporting systems even now. For example, um, this is a study conducted by uh, Professor John from KAIST, and it's about traffic control for this overhead transporter in semiconductor uh, fabrication plant. Okay, um, so in this type of plant, and the, there's really the aut automated um, um, the material handling system that the, the transport the robot transport uh, the material from uh, between the multiple uh, processing machines. So uh, this is the automated system, and then our scheme can be applied ready to applicable to the control of this type of automated systems. Okay, so with this, I would like to uh, conclude my presentation by playing another um, animation created by uh, one of my team members, uh, Ling Shi. And so uh, this is the, the video.
Okay, so if you're interested in what we're proposing, um, so here are some working papers um, and available on archive. So the first two papers, you can search uh, rhythmic control, you can easily find that first two papers. So the third, we're still working on the third paper, um, plan to uh, make, it, make it available uh, during March, okay? So with this, I would like to, uh, I'm happy to answer questions if you have any. Thanks, Yafang. So it's, uh, it seems like a, a different music will lead to a different style of controls. <laughs> All right, so uh, we had uh, two uh, questions from the uh, audience here. Uh, the first is a sub-channel asked uh, in the chat menu, can RT have an opportunity to improve its performance if the vehicles are capable of communicating with each other ahead of facing the conflicting points? So what do you think about that? Um... It could be, but I doubt it. Um, because the reason why we don't do this, because um, if you if you allow people to talk to each other and negotiate with each other, right, or coordinate with each other, so then you could go with a distributed systems, right? Mm -hmm. That distributed system, and then if you want to optimize it, and then you have to use some mechanism to ensure collision free, and that inevitably leads to a a um, a, a poor performance, that's my intuition, right? Um, so that's why I can, I can imagine some of the scenario that you can, when the light traffic scenario, um, you can do so, okay? Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to follow the beat. And so then you can reduce the delay. Um, but on the other hand, for the light congestion situation, our control is very efficient. So uh, even you do that, the saving is, is not, um, I would, I would think the saving is negligible. But in the, for the heavy congestion, um, and then this type of negotiation or communication doesn't help too much. Um, so I think a quick answer to this question is, um, um, my intuition is no, uh, it's, a less, it's unlikely. And also remember, I would like to argue that, okay, emphasize that we, we want the control to be really, this is really deterministic control, right? So everything is preset. Um, so therefore, um, the, this, the, the, it's computationally tractable because you don't do any real-time optimization. Mm -hmm. so, but you can ensure high throughput, really, and less delay. All right. Thanks. Uh, there was another question in the Q&A uh, part of it. Uh, Yao Shou Sun uh, asked, uh, what main assumptions have to be made about drivers or riders on those uh, AVs for this new traffic control scheme work? How can priority be give, given to certain vehicles, carrying patient, for instance? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the assumption is essentially we treat those vehicles as as equally, right? Machines and riders, um, so they just they just follow the predetermined um, the beat, right? There's a beat, the sequence. You just follow the beat to enter the intersections. Um, and then you follow the predetermined vehicle trajectory, the speed profile uh, to traverse. So this way we can ensure collision free, we can ensure high throughput. Mm -hmm. But then if you think, okay, there's a situation where you want to give priority um, to certain vehicles um, and then, um, and then this is, um, I think this is interesting. Um, can, if you want to do a, priority, um, how would you do it? So my, so my immediate response is it's possible, um, but, I, but I really don't want to mess up my rhythmic control because everything is, is pre-optimized. So I can imagine a hybrid uh, operation where I can have, I can have a, um, a priority phase, okay? This is the phase that dedicated to this type of emergency vehicles. Um, and then, so then once I receive such a priority call request, I can call, call on the phase, I can stop the uh, rhythmic control and then I call the special phase or the priority phase to accommodate this operations, accommodate the request, and then I switch back to rhythmic control. So that's my immediate, immediate re reaction to this question. Can accommodate request? Okay, we do a hybrid operation. Essentially, if you think about traffic signal control, um, you have a all the pedestrian phase, 
one single pedestrian phase, for example, and then you have the uh, or this other general phase, right? So you, you, some of the intersection has such an operation. There's in pedestrian only phase. So here I can do something similar. I, can, I have two phases. One is my priority phase. The other one is my rhythmic control phase. And then once I have some requests, I can call the priority phase to provide the the uh, priority to those vehicles, and then I return back to my rhythmic control. So that's some that's the in immediate reaction I have um, for this for this question. This is a good question. Um, and then, do we have a smarter way to accommodate that? Uh, maybe. Or I can think of the traffic situation. Um, because for example, for the traffic control, for the network control, we do have some re vehicle reshuffling uh, in between the intersections to ensure that vehicle do not block another vehicle from following the beat to enter the intersection. So for this one, we can definitely, yeah, in the routing, in the routing scenarios, I can definitely give priority to this vehicle, to allow the vehicle to get to the shortage pass and also allow vehicle get priority and then I still use the rhythmic control to ensure collision free at the intersections. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the narrow operation, it's easy, it's, it's can be easily accommodate, accommodated, and then can uh, that can save a lot of time. Uh, but for individual intersection, I think the room, we don't have too much room to work around. Thanks, Apa. Uh, there was one more question uh, from Byung-Yin Kim. Um, he said, uh, can you accommodate to uh, the crossover walking times? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I used to stop altogether. Yeah, that's what I, I refer to. Um, so this could be two possibility. One, one is, uh, for example, as this, this, this. Um, so as this design was, was, was trying to suggest that, OK, pedestrian use the overpass uh, to cross the intersections, right? Mm -hmm. And another one is just uh, what I was referring to. We, we could have a all pedestrian phase together with the risk in addition to the rhythmic control phase, right? So we just shut down the rhythmic control and then allow the pedestrian phase, pedestrian all the pedestrian cross the intersections at one time. So this is the type of operation that some of the traffic signal control, uh, some of the intersections actually are doing. Um, so they have all the traffic phase and there's no pedestrian, but then they have an all pedestrian phase to accommodate all the pedestrians for all the directions. Okay, so this can be done. Um, this is something uh, can be done as well. Thanks, Apple. Uh, so from now on, uh, if you like to ask question, any questions live uh, or just say hello, uh, I mean, you are welcome to turn on your microphone and uh, uh, I mean, speak up. So anyway, so uh, in the meantime, so I have one question. So uh, I think you are assuming uh, all the vehicle size are the same. So if there is a like, uh, I mean, long trailer truck coming mm -hmm. up, I mean, like it requires more space to make a turn. Yeah, so right. in the new design you're suggesting, uh, I think uh, that is, I mean, it's not really, uh, uh, I mean, it's okay, but uh, I mean, in a traditional design, it could be a problem, especially as uh, that long trailer can make a, like a right turn or left turn. Right, so there's two way you can do. One way is um, when you design it, which is when you design it, and then you just use the maximum uh, vehicle length as a design mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if, if you look at the, my de design process, um, here. So if you still want to maintain fixed plan, which is meaning that the predetermined plan, you do not want to optimize or or, or do any real-time adjustment, then you can just use the maximum length of the vehicle in the traffic stream as this design variables. And then you essentially just increase the bit length. And then you can all the procedure follow and then you can easily accommodate the large trucks. Um, but this type of design will, will compromise the general overall um, um, efficiency, right? Because um, the truck do not always show up in the traffic stream. Um, so you design for the worst case. Um, so then um, if you do not want to do that, then you can do some a more moderate estimation. Okay, I don't have to use the maximum length. I use a medium. And then this will allow me to accommodate most of the vehicles. And then once I have a large vehicle, 
I guess that get back to the uh, Yen Shou's question that, that I can treat that as a special vehicle with a special need, right? So I have to do some real time adjustment, mm -hmm. right? I, I have to, for example, hold um, for the for the um, for the so for the vehicle. If this is a long vehicle, and then for all the conflict components. Mm -hmm. I have to hold the vehicle for one more interval, right? Because for example, every two beat, you release the vehicle. And then when you have a large truck coming and then that truck gonna cross, for example, three conflict points, for all the conflicting movements, I will gonna hold additional, I gonna release the vehicle, for example, longer. I don't have to release every two beat. I can release the vehicle every four beats until this vehicle pass. I gonna create much more space for this vehicle to traverse the conflict point. So that can be done by real by uh, a real time adjustment. Thank you. Um, all right. So I have, uh, I have, I have one question. Yes. Uh, hey, hi, uh, hi. I'm Venkatesh. I'm from North Carolina A&T State University. So I had one question about, uh, like uh, you said, like every time a car arrives, it has to match the rhythm of the yeah, yeah. the particular lane they are in. So, like, do you anticipate like building up of cues because, like, if vehicles arrive a little stochastic, do you uh -huh. anticipate that there might be like cues on the links which lead up to the intersection? Yeah. And can that potentially create issues with overflow or gridlock? Right. That's that's a very good question. Um, so we we want to ensure okay the argument here is you want the operation to be deterministic right to ensure collision free because this is really a high efficient operations um so therefore if the vehicle arrive and they are off beat and you have to you want them to follow the beat to enter right and this is make this making sure the operation is deterministic um so that actually that's the reason why they have delay okay so for the delay equation i show here So the delay equation I show here, um, the second component is what you refer to. So those are the random arrival delay, delay caused by random arrival. Um, so this, this is the, the first one because you, every two beats, I release one vehicle. So on average, the, their waiting time is one length of the beat. For that design mm -hmm. process, 0 0.60, 25 seconds. The second one is caused by random arrival, right? Mm -hmm. So the Q, this is the Q lens. You still, you do, you do, sometimes you do, you do see some Q uh, forming outside of the intersection. But the Q lens is limited uh, because simply because um, this second, this is, you see that it's every two sec, 10 seconds, right? So you can, you can estimate the average number of the Q. Um, the Q is, is, is limited. Um, so this is, a, we can ensure that is this bounded about meaning that the Q, num, the Q lens is finite. Okay, the Q mm -hmm. lens is finite. So that's the reason why um, I argue, I emphasize the admissible demand set. So at the miscible demand set give you a, for example, a box. And then if your arrival demand pattern is within this box, I can use, ensure the final number Q, I can, I can mitigate the spillback, right? Um, and then, but if you outside of this at the miscible demand set, I, there's no guarantee. I may not be able to accommodate your demand. So you can see that, okay, the Q is gonna spill back to adjacent intersection. So that can happen. That's also happened for the general um, traffic signal control, right? No, no, no. Yeah, it, it's a it's a great idea, of course. Like, uh, but it's like very fascinating to see it all like put in together. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.